You know, we've covered a lot of Crash Bandicoot games. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But the unfortunate thing about the Crash Bandicoot series is that there are so many different games from so many different developers on so many different platforms encompassing so many different genres for me to ever cover individually or in depth. So today, for your viewing pleasure, I've decided I'm going to cover all of the Crash Bandicoot leftovers. Yeah! If there's one platform that nobody ever brings up when it comes to gaming, it's mobile games. And I'm not talking about iOS or Android, I'm talking about mid-2000s flip phones, those kind of mobile games. I don't think I've ever played or even seen a single mobile game that's more than like a 5 or a 6 out of 10, though I could be wrong, but how do you have a game with any level of depth when the controls are a number pad and sometimes directional buttons and the average file size would make an NES cartridge blush? It was the CDI of portable gaming, so let that set the scene for what's to come. OG mobile Mobile games were so cheap to develop and had an even lower bar than Newgrounds Flash Gaming, so small-time companies sprung up to make a quick buck, most of which disappeared as quickly as they came and probably don't even have Wikipedia articles, more on that in a bit. But anyway, thanks to those standards, Vivendi Universal Games and its subsidiaries commissioned a mobile port for pretty much every game they made, and then some. So to save time because there's no way to go in-depth with all of these games, we're gonna be doing this speed round style, so let's jump in. I already talked about Crash Nitro Kart on mobile and how I think it's the absolute worst way to play the game, and that includes the end gauge, but would you believe that this game got a mobile exclusive sequel, Crash Nitro Kart 2? Let's check it out. So this game was also released on iOS devices in 2010, and fun fact, was for a time the final Crash Bandicoot game released. However, this version, oddly enough, was released in June 2008, and it doesn't say who made it, so I'm going to assume the iOS version was a later port. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to have to eat my own words within the first five minutes of this video because this game isn't half bad. In fact, I would go as far as to say it's pretty decent. Graphically, it surprised me. It looks on the level of a Super FX Chip SNES game, but it works with what it has very competently and has an appealing, albeit simple, art style, and I especially like the character art. The controls are smooth and intuitive, the drifting is easy to figure out, the weapons are very useful and pack a punch, the track design is surprisingly competent and makes use of the various mechanics, and there are little bits of depth here and there, such as with the letters you can collect and when you collect them all you get a massive speed boost, incentivizing clever strategy. I'm shocked and pleased with how well this turned out. I was originally just gonna play this game for 10 or so minutes to get a feel for it, but I actually stayed for more than double that. There's a surprising amount of content to be unlocked, incentivizing return playthroughs, the base mechanics feel smooth enough for the racing to be fun, there's actually a game here which is more than I expected when I picked it up. Crash Nitro Kart 2 also features the debut of the one-time use character Yaya the Panda, but not too much else in terms of impact on the series as a whole. If there's one problem, I found this game to be too easy once I got the hang of it, and I guess the frame rate is understandably kinda meh, but the fact that I found this game to be any level of fun whatsoever is above and beyond what I expected for Crash Nitro Kart 2. I rate this game finding a $5 bill in an old pair of jeans out of 10. Continuing on from Crash Nitro Kart 2, we have the final mobile Crash Bandicoot Racer, the simply and unimaginatively named Crash Racing, a tie-in game to Crash Tag Team Racing, which is why it's the only other appearance of Pasadena. An opossum. What a claim to fame. This game was made by Kyolink, a prolific Java game developer and publisher, until they went defunct and were bought out in 2008. So long ago that the website Link is dead and they don't even have a Wikipedia page. Crash Racing is almost identical to the mobile version of Crash Nitro Kart, and I suspect they were made on the same engine. The mechanics are sluggish and boring, the gameplay is choppy, the weapons are limited, and there's nothing new I can say in terms of base mechanics other than it's a dull racer where you hold forward on mostly straight tracks until you either win or lose. This game's defining flaw is that it's incredibly poorly balanced. 
first, it's far too easy for people to pull ahead of you, but once they do, it's hard for you to do the same. I got trapped in a loop at one point where I was in first place, then got fucked over by every character in quick succession, ended up in last, and couldn't recover. So I just felt like it never had to do with skill whether or not I won. It might as well have been a dice roll. The graphics are acceptable considering the hardware, but uninspired. There's no style. There's not any real content to keep me coming back other than the aforementioned Pasadena factor, and there's nothing special about this game that makes it worth playing. I rate this game dead rat that the cat dragged in out of 10. Next up, we have the self-titled Crash Bandicoot, though the file extension has an EXEN at the end, so whoopie fucking do. In any case, this game was also developed by Kyle Link and released in 2005. Let me tell you that this game was a bitch to get running. I had to fiddle around a shitload with the emulator settings before it would reluctantly allow me to play this one. Plus, at some point, I might have accidentally switched this game to French, and I couldn't figure out how to switch it back. And as this game starts, Oh my god. Oh my god. This... This is awful. Like, straight up, this might be one of the worst things I've ever seen. It's fuck ugly, and my fucks are ugly, let me tell you. The animation's practically non-existent, like, for example, the explosions are just still frames they hold on for several seconds, but then there's even Crash, who has, like, five frames of animation total. It just... Ah, oh, it's so choppy. The game runs at like 2 FPS. I'm constantly getting killed because the lack of perspective of what I can see means I'm constantly having to make leap of faith judgment calls. Plus, the hit detection is atrocious. I kept dying because I barely grazed an enemy, and so the level design and mechanics are just absolutely terrible. The controls are also horribly delayed, and there are some different types of levels, like there's this one type of level that's a forced runner type level, and there are other aspects of gameplay like collection and whatnot, but honestly, it astounds me how a game that looks, feels, and plays this horribly can be made even in 2005, even on mobile devices. It also astounds me how a game that plays this terribly somehow has 25 levels. I could barely get through three before I packed it in, and the music? Dear God, if there was ever an appropriate use for the term chiptune diarrhea, this would be it. I don't think I've ever played a game so insulting in every way. Visual vomit, and I'm not just talking about the graphical glitches, gameplay equivalent of a hot Carl, and sound design on par with a badly made MS-DOS game, really... There's nothing more to say about this game. It's so insubstantial, but it's so terrible, and so I have no choice but to give this game the lowest possible score of deep fried anus out of 10. Moving on, we have Crash Boom Bang Mobile, aka Crash Bandicoot Party Games, Viva Vendi Games Mobile. As is obvious, this game is a tie-in game to the DS game Crash Boom Bang, and if there was ever a game that didn't need a tie-in game, that's like giving a tie-in game to gonorrhea, but let's be fair, this game isn't actually half bad, but it's not half good either. If Crash Boom Bang Classic was a Mario Party ripoff, then this version has its lips firmly wrapped around WarioWare's, I'll let you mentally fill in the blank, but where WarioWare might have hundreds of micro games, this game has 14. Woohoo. None of them are particularly bad, and there are even a few moments of fun to be had, but there aren't enough fun minigames, or for that matter, minigames, for this to be a worthwhile game. You've experienced everything you'll need to experience within 10 minutes, but to be fair, the high score mechanic is something, though this game would benefit from an online scoreboard, which it doesn't have for obvious reasons, but in terms of gameplay, there seems to be a massive problem with explaining mechanics. It'll give a brief, vague explanation of what I'm supposed to do, and then throw me in and expect me to nail it on the first try, but I guess that's to incentivize future playthroughs but seeing as you've experienced everything you'll need to experience within the first 10 minutes, it's kind of pointless to come back beyond the multiplayer if it comes up. But I could see this as a decent time killer if I were on the bus in 2006. So I rate this one bag of Skittles you found in the garbage that has a few Skittles left over out of 10. Next up is Crash Twin Sanity Mobile. There were two different mobile versions of Crash Twin Sanity, and the first one we're gonna talk about is the 2D version, developed by Kyle Link again. This one's a fairly simple game. It's a take on these sections where you needed to guide Cortex through obstacles, dock a muck I think they were called, and builds a game around it, and it doesn't have too much depth, but it's pretty good for as simple as it is. You press switches and blow up blocks and whatnot to let Cortex through an obstacle course until he has to do the same for you. Mechanically, it works pretty well, minus some instances of obstacles that Cortex was clearly supposed to let me pass, but I could just jump over, but there's really not much to say. It's a one-note game, but as far as that one note goes, it's pretty good. It looks pretty nice, the animation is smooth, well, except for when Crash decides to do the can-can dance.
The controls are solid and intuitive, the gameplay is good, it's pretty decent and something I could see myself getting into if they continuously expanded on- Wait, that's it? I- I play for 16 minutes and that's the end? Then the evil twins are defeated off screen via text box? It was fun while it lasted, but... That's it? I give this game really good sandwich that you take one bite out of and then it gets knocked out of your hands out of 10. But for what it's worth, it's more worth your time than Crash Twin Sanity 3D. Also made by Kyo Link, this one tries to follow Crash Twin Sanity Classic more, which they adapt into a linear Crash 1 style, but I wouldn't know how far they go with it because I couldn't play it past the first level. The ROM folder I downloaded has two versions of this game, and they both had problems. The first one was riddled with bugs, like how the text wouldn't align where it should have, and the frame rate was Fred Durst levels of terrible, but even in the other ROM which fixed these problems, it crashed after one level. The controls are clunky, the hit detection is outrageously unfair, if you so much as touch a pit with the tip of your foot, the scene fades out like Porky Pig's about to pop out. The level design is dull, usually just amounts to one single piss easy obstacle at a time, which I'll usually die on anyway because of the aforementioned poor hit detection, and the live system as ever adds nothing except arbitrary backtracking when you run out of lives, which is egregious because of how bullshit the difficulty system in this game can be, and how generally dull this game is otherwise. The graphics are surprisingly decent, and the soundtrack is okay, but overall this game feels awkward to play. They tried to adapt Crash Bandicoot in a similar way to the very first game, but utterly failed in every way. Damn shame I couldn't get past the first level in either case, because there could have been some potential here, what with it looking very ahead of its time, and very ahead of its hardware, honestly. Keyword, could. I rate this game 9 year old stinky diaper out of 10. Next up we have Crash of the Titans Mobile. Once again, this game is split into two versions, both developed by D-Valley, and from what I can tell, the only major differences are the graphics. The first version is a fairly minimalistic beat-em-up where you mash the 5 key to punch. The graphics are fairly simple, and the animation is mostly basic. It carries over the beat-em-up spirit from Crash of the Titans while being tremendously downgraded in every way, but I can definitely tell that somebody was trying with this one, especially with the soundtrack. <laughs> That's pretty badass. There's really not much more to say on this matter. You move right and deck anybody who moves. It's not rocket surgery. The jacking mechanics not worked in too horribly. You just need to press the six key and you may need them to get past an arbitrary inorganic progress wall. It's basic, functional, and even fun at times, but definitely not the most eventful game in the universe. I rate it chocolate rice cake out of 10. Then we get to the updated version of this game. Well, hot diggity damn. This is a game. Like, this is a game that if it were released on Steam for 5 bucks, nobody would bat an eye. The art style is cartoony and exaggerated, the animation's smooth, the gameplay is visceral and fun, the music is great. This is a really solid game. The only thing that really holds it back are the controls because they're kind of clunky, even more so than the downgraded version for some reason, but if they tightened up the controls and adapted this game for PC or console, this could be a fun budget game because even for as simple and somewhat clunky as it is here, this is one hell of a solid Streets of Rage style beat-em-up and has everything I look for in said games. Hell, the only reason I stopped playing is because I couldn't figure out how to unlock this door. Aside from that, it follows the console titles more accurately as in it actually has an opening cutscene and probably has the most to offer out of all of these games. This was surprisingly good. I rate this game chocolate jump scare out of 10. Next up we have Crash Bandicoot Mutant Island. I suppose a sequel to Mind Over Mutants because it came out in 2009. This game was also split into two versions and I think they were both developed by Vivendi Games Mobile. First of all, the downgraded version. I say I think because I'm not sure as the first version doesn't show any eye dents. Anyway, this first version is a bit lame. The graphics are flatter than a pancake. For example, the sky is just a flat color, the animation is minimalistic, and the environments are just the same repeated texture. It looks like something I could whip up in a weekend. The gameplay is an endless monotony of wandering around and button mashing enemies to death, and you can only move to the next level once you've defeated every enemy. I think these are bandicoots you're rescuing by punching them, but regardless, this game is dull, dull, 
dull. The jumping controls were inconsistent, it was a coin flip as to whether or not the double jump would even work, and the game had a habit of putting instant death spikes after mandatory drops, so it's a bit of a badly designed mess as well as being boring. It's playable, but it's something I could sooner see curing my insomnia than me playing it casually. I rate this game blank paper out of 10. And finally, the second version of Crash Mutant Island. This game looks nice, animates well, sounds good, and has some nice atmosphere here and there, but it's killed by one fatal flaw. The controls are dreadful. Normally I can get through these games with a standard keyboard setup just fine, and I'm sure that this game would have been better if I were playing on authentic hardware, but these controls are just awful either way. How do I know? I went to the menu at one point and couldn't back out. I pressed every button. I even brought up the manual keyboard and pressed every button, but nothing happened. I don't know how anyone can design a menu that you can't back out of short of a 12 year old making games on Unity, or as it should be known these days, the average game developer, but as soon as I I tried to reload the ROM or restart the game, the entire emulator crashed, which is, I guess, ironic when you think about it, and that was entirely unique to this game. Crash Bandicoot Mobile was terrible, but at least it kinda worked. This might actually be more unplayable, but once I managed to get the game working without going into a broken menu, I managed to stumble and bumble my way through most of a level, and found that it's at best box standard 2D side-scroller number 2843, but I couldn't get past the god-awful controls to figure out how I was supposed to get through these unintuitively laid out bullshit levels, so when seven minutes into the game it crashed, I thought, well, that's as good of an excuse as any. I rate this game bar of flaming soap out of 10, and that's it for games I'm able to play. There's also a Japan-only sequel to Crash Boom Bang called Crash Bandicoot Intuition, or Chokan Crash Bandicoot in Japan. <laughs> Chokan... Chokan something. Chokan... Chokan some sort of bodily orifice. I don't know. You fill in the blanks. I couldn't find any info on it anywhere aside from the fact that it existed, so it may have been lost to time. It was exclusive to the Docomo phone in Japan and utilized motion control. Given the few poultry screenshots, it looks impressive for what it is, but if it's flying the flag of Crash Boom Bang, then maybe it's best left unplayed. Bit of a shame that it may not exist anymore though, because no game deserves to disappear from existence, but I guess throughout history there will always be those games that slip through the cracks, and quite frankly, I wouldn't have even known about this one had I not stumbled across it while looking at the list of mobile games. I must say though, it's gratifying to finally be able to review games that nobody with half a brain would ever defend. Nobody's gonna mail me Anthrax packages for saying Crash Bandicoot Mobile's soundtrack is shit. I would hope, anyway. And that's it for the Crash Bandicoot Mobile games. Now, there are far too many Crash Bandicoot leftovers for me to properly cover in one video, so stay tuned next time, where we will cover everything else. iOS games, bootlegs, fan games, cancelled games, and anything else that may need to be covered. So stay tuned, but until then, TGX over, out, and I'll see you next time.